If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's Anchor. A-N-C-H-O-R. And get your podcast started today. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Two Sisters, One TV. The classic TV podcast where we talk about all things classic TV. Today, we want to take a quick look with you at Bewitched, one of the most lighthearted and beloved and fun TV shows of all time. Now, Bewitched made its debut on ABC in September of 1964. It ended up being the most popular new show of the season. It finished out the 1964-1965 season as the second highest rated show in the country right after Bonanza, just ahead of Gomer Pyle, which was yet another TV show that debuted that season. Now, Bewitched had a very simple premise. It was about a pretty witch named Samantha who met and married and fell in love with a mortal named Darren Stevens, who he was a uh, advertising exec at an ad agency, McMahon and Tate. And throughout the entire courtship of Darren and Samantha, and when they got married, Darren had no idea that she was a witch. He doesn't find this out until she tells him on their wedding night. And basically, the TV show is about what it's like being married to a witch and what it's like dealing with that witch's crazy family, particularly her mother in Dora. Because Samantha's family, not crazy at all about the fact that she was married to a mortal. And they did not mind hiding their disgust. They were, they did not even try, rather, to hide their disgust. So the basic episode of Bewitched pretty much went like this. Darren and Endora have a disagreement, or Endora is just in a bad mood thinking about her daughter being married to a mortal. So she decides to put a spell on Darren. Something, she she turns him into a little boy. She gives him elephant ears. She turns him into some kind of a, a, a very small, uh, you know, man. She, she, she does something. She changes his personality. She changes his looks. She does something to Darren to make him uncomfortable. And almost every single time, some kind of an account, some kind of a client within McMahon and Tate is caught in the middle of Endora's spell. And of course, Larry Tate, David, uh, Darren's boss, freaking out. Oh, what's going on with Darren? Or oh, we're going to lose the account. Or oh, we're going to lose the client. You know, because of course, you know, he was totally out of the loop, didn't know what was going on. And so Sam, of course, realizes that Endora has placed Darren under a spell. She asks Endora to take the spell off. Endora refuses. Endora wants to continue to stick it to Darren a little while longer. So Durawood, as she called him, must remain under the spell a while longer. So finally, Sam puts her foot down, demands Endora take off the spell, which she begrudgingly does. Everything is back to normal. The client and the account are saved. Darren and Sam live happily ever after. It was a very simple formula, but it really worked. It was very successful. And it's something that we all still enjoy watching today. I mean, Bewitched still, all of these years later, still has a very loyal, very large fan base. There was a poll that was taken over on Antenna TV about a year or two ago, where they asked viewers to go to the website and select your 10 favorite TV shows being shown on Antenna. I participated in the poll, and when the results were tallied, when the votes all were counted up, Bewitched was voted as the most popular TV show on Antenna. Now, Bewitched is still on Antenna TV. It's shown seven days a week, 
two episodes a day. Of course, the entire series is available on DVD. Lots of memorabilia over on eBay as well as Amazon. Lots of books about uh, the show. Also books about Liz Montgomery. So there's lots of great stuff out there about Bewitch, lots of websites, all kinds of good stuff in regard to the show. But what I really want to take a look at today is a lot of the behind the scenes drama that went on on the show, because there was a lot of backstage drama that a lot of us knew nothing about until years later. Now, as you know, Dick York originated the role of Baron in 1964, and he stayed with the show for five years. Dick Sarta took over the role in 1969 and stayed with it until the show ended in 1972. Now, Dick York ended up in a, having a serious back injury when he was working on a, a Gary Cooper film in the late 50s. Can't remember the name of the movie, but it also starred Rita Hayworth. And he was seriously injured on the set of that film while filming a scene. The muscles in his back completely tore completely ripped and he was in agony with his back for the rest of his life he became addicted to painkillers and he was just in constant pain and if you look at some of the episodes of bewitched especially as you get into 1967 1968 you'll see that darren was in bed a lot or he was lying on the couch a lot or he just wasn't there Darren was out of town on business. Darren was at work. Darren was upstairs. Darren was in the yard. I mean, Darren was missing more and more. And by the his last season on the show, Darren was really, I mean, really not there. And there were times where he was just in too much pain to come to work or he was just too drugged up from painkillers to come to work because he did get addicted to painkillers. He developed a very strong addiction to them. And some days he just couldn't make it to the set. And so, I mean, this began to really affect the show. Not the ratings stayed good. I mean, Dick York's last season, Bewitched ended Uh, at number 12 in the ratings so it was still a a top 20 show but I mean you couldn't have Bewitched and not have Darren I mean he was an integral part of the show so you had to have him there but um, by the 1968-69 season if you look very closely at some of the episodes you could tell that he was in physical pain when he was standing the way that I know in the last episode that Dick York was in he was standing and he was gripping the edge of the table that was in front of him so you could tell that he was in a lot of pain just by watching him in that scene and you know it's really heartbreaking to to know to see that he was suffering so badly so in the middle of filming a scene during that season one day dick york collapsed on the set was taken to the hospital and um it was decided bill asher who was the producer of the show also liz montgomery's husband also the primary director on the show went to visit him they talked And it was decided that Dick would leave the show. He felt that he was really uh, holding everybody back. He was really being a hindrance to the show and being a burden. And he didn't want that. So, you know, he was written out of the show. Um, Now, there's also another claim. Again, I don't know if this is true. You can go and research it the way that I did. I found out all of this stuff about Bewitched behind the scenes by basically videos on YouTube, articles on the internet, going to Google. Um, There is a claim also that Dick York was in love with Liz Montgomery. Now, again, I don't know if that is true or not. I don't know if it's fabricated, blown up proportion. It might be completely on point. I don't know. But word has it that she did not enjoy working with him because she was uncomfortable by the fact that he was in love with her and she did not feel the same way. Now, Dick York was a happily married man. He was married to his wife, Joan, whom he called Joey. They were married for many years. They were married until Dick's passing. They had five kids together. So, you know, again, don't know if it was true or not. 
But I do know that after Dick York did leave Bewitched, he and Liz Montgomery never saw one another again. They never spoke again. I mean, he would call her from time to time. He'd leave messages on her her answering machine. She'd never call him back. When he passed away, she said nothing publicly. She had no words to say about Dick York at all. When Dick Sargent passed away, however, she made a statement about him publicly. So, I mean, that's very telling. Now, I thought for the longest that she was mad at Dick York because he left the show and that, you know, he was putting her show in jeopardy by leaving. But by 1969, I found out not too long ago that she was kind of tired of the show anyway. By that point, was ready to be done with it herself. She'd done it for five years. She had three kids, including a, a brand new baby girl. And she was kind of tired of the, the, the grind of weekly show. But ABC wanted the show to continue. It was so successful. And, you know, they gave her a huge increase in salary. It was so huge that she just couldn't turn it down. And she signed a new contract and agreed to do the show for four more years. That's how come Dick Sargent came into play. Now, Dick Sargent was supposed to be Darren from the very beginning in 1964, but he had other commitments. He's committed to another TV show. And so he couldn't take the part. And that's how Dick York got it. But by 1969, he was available and they signed him on to, you know, be the, you know, the second Darren. Now, one person who was very unhappy about this change within the show was Agnes Moorhead, who portrayed Endora. She and Dick York, very close friends behind the scenes. They were very, very close, had a great working relationship. Um, He was the person that she was the closest to on the show. When he left, she was very upset very disappointed, did not take it well. She was very angry, and she took her anger out on poor Dick Sargent. She was very nasty to him, especially in the beginning when he first came to the show. She's very rude, very disrespectful, very ugly to him, to the point of she had him in tears on the set. This didn't go over well with her TV daughter, Liz Montgomery, called her on her behavior told her that she was going to have to get herself together and accept the fact that, you know, we have a new Darren. We have made a change in the cast. Fortunately, over time, she and Dick Sargent did develop a cordial working relationship. They were never friends, but she did leave the guy alone and stopped bullying him and harassing him and and degrading him. And they were able to work together for the rest of the run of the show. Now, Dick Sargent's portrayal, I must admit, Dick York, as I've gotten older, I really have come to appreciate what he brought to the table as Darren. Dick York was the perfect Darren. He was so funny in just his facial expressions, his body language, his mannerisms, and his gestures. The way he gets so freaked out by stuff, I mean, it's hilarious to watch all of these years later. It's still very entertaining and very funny. Dick Sargent, I must say, I do think he did the right thing by not going down the same road as Dick York did in trying to emulate his portrayal. Dick Sargent's portrayal, definitely more stuffy, uh, more aloof, more cold and detached. Not from Liz Montgomery, but I would say definitely from, you know, Endora, Uncle Arthur, Serena, Esmeralda. Um, so, you know, he, he definitely was not nearly as hilarious as Dick York. I do think that sometimes Dick Sargent gets a little bit too harsh of a rap from the fans. Um, a lot of people just detest Dick Sargent and his portrayal of Darren. I mean, honestly, there are times when he's not funny at all in an episode. But, I mean, there are other times when, you know, he wasn't that bad. That's just my opinion. I mean, I like both Dick York and Dick Sargent. I like both actors. I like them, you know, equally. I'm very fond of both of them. Um, but... You know, some fans are just, you know, they, they, they get real passionate about the whole situation and sometimes they kind of overdo it, I think. Now, the ratings did dip after Dick York left the show. 
As I said, at the end of the 1969-1968, rather 1969 season, Bewitched ended um, the season as the, the, at the number 12 spot in the ratings. At the end of the 1969-1970 season, it had dropped down to number 25. So it did dip significantly when Dick York left. But, um, you know, Dick Sargent and Liz Montgomery, very close friends. They, Liz Montgomery, you know, she, very laid back lady. People love working with her. She was very, you know, chill, very down to earth, not full of herself at all. Um, but she didn't socialize with a lot of people um, outside of the show. One person that she did socialize with outside of the show uh, outside of, of the set was Dick Sargent. Liz and her husband, Bill Asher, would often have dinner with Dick Sargent and his partner. Because for those of you who do not know, Dick Sargent was gay. And he hid the fact that he was gay for many, many years because he was afraid that if he came out as gay, it would ruin his career. And unfortunately, that is pretty much what happened. But, you know, more on that later. So they knew that he was gay, but they still hired him to portray Darren. And, you know, he and Liz were still very, very close. They were lifelong friends, had a great relationship, both on and off set. And uh, one thing I did notice about Dick Sargent's portrayal was that I must say he was a little bit standoffish with the kids, Tabitha and Adam. This is not a criticism, just an observation. Now, Dick York, definitely more affectionate with Tabitha. But I attribute it to the fact that Dick York had five kids. So he knew about, you know, how to, how to, you know, relate to kids. Dick Sargent had no kids. I think that's why he was kind of um, a little bit detached from the kids on the show. But by 1971, um, the ratings, of course, began to really decline. For one thing, Bewitched was being shown opposite All in the Family. And All in the Family was the number one show in the country, the show of 1971. All in the Family did not start off as a rating success. But by the fall of 1971, it was the top show in the country. And everybody was watching it and talking about it. It was getting lots and lots of attention. And Bewitched just really began to suffer in the ratings. So... The show was supposed to run until 1973, per the contract Liz signed in 1969, but she wanted the show to end immediately in late 1971. One reason why, of course, the ratings, but another reason was Liz had fallen in love with another man. His name, Richard Michaels. Richard Michaels was one of the directors on Bewitched. I don't remember the year that he came to the show. I think maybe 1968, 1969. Richard Michaels was married just like Liz was, but the two fell in love, became very smitten with each other, and uh, developed a very serious, intense romance, which lasted a couple of years. Now, initially, they tried to hide their relationship from the cast and the crew, but it became just too difficult for them to be able to do so. It was very obvious that they were very much in love, very much involved, very much head over heels for one another. But this made it very complicated for them to work together, especially with Bill Asher, who was still directing episodes, still producer of the show. I mean, it was literally... It was a very messy situation. I mean, how in the world were the three of them ever going to be able to get to work together with Liz and Richard Michaels being involved in an affair? Now, according to uh, Bill Asher himself, he never got over Liz Montgomery. He blamed himself for the breakup of their marriage. It was said that rumored that he cheated on her during the marriage. Uh, don't know if that's true, but I do know that Bill Asher did take full responsibility for the fact that they broke up. Um, he carried a torch for Liz for the rest of his life. But that was one reason why Liz wanted to end the show because it was just, just it was just too problematic for the three of them to try to work together on the show any longer. So Liz and Richard Michaels went on a trip. I think they went to Italy. They went there for a little while, came back, moved in together, and they were together for about two, two and a half years. Of course, Bewitched 
came to an end in 1972, came to a quiet end. Um, I love, you know, all of the seasons. It's on for eight seasons, aired for, oh my gosh, over 200 episodes. Lots of favorite episodes in there. You know, my favorite is Sisters at Heart, which is also Liz Montgomery's favorite. That was her favorite episode as well. That was the one where Tabitha and her little friend Lisa didn't think they could be sisters because they were different races. Great episode, you know. Um, it aired originally in December of 1970. It is on YouTube, I think. Definitely a part of the DVD for season seven. And, you know, I love that episode. Um, I also love the episode where uh, this is one of the last episodes ever shown. Samantha had gotten an allergic reaction to a drink and she had all of these red stripes all over her face. Hilarious episode. I also like the episode when Tabitha started to school. This also was from the last season. That was funny. Tabitha being in school and all of the hilarity that came from that. She turns one of her little classmates who was bullying her into a bullfrog. So lots of great episodes that would be wished down through the years. The episode where we first saw Serena pop up. She popped up uh, actually when Tabitha had just been born. That was the first episode that Serena was in, if I'm not mistaken. That was a great episode because we got to see some very rare closeness between Darren and Endora. And speaking of Bewitched, I must say that I really did love the portrayal of Alice Pierce as Mrs. Kravitz in the first two seasons. She was wonderful in that role. And it's so sad that she passed away during the run of the show because I would often I wonder how would the show have been had she stayed on the show, had she not passed away, had Dick York stayed on the show, um, had Marianne Lauren stayed on the show. She too passed away during the show's run in 1968. So I think about these things every now and then when I watch Bewitched or think about the show. Um, but regardless of the cast changes, regardless of the rumors and the gossip of what went on behind the scenes, Bewitched is a TV show that I absolutely still love to watch. It is adorable. It's so charming and innocent and sweet and fun. And, you know, I'm so fond of all of the cast. Unfortunately, most of the cast Bewitched has passed. Dick York um, suffered a lot in his latter years. I mean, the latter years of his life were very difficult after he left Bewitched. He did kick the addiction to painkillers. He went cold turkey. Um, he really struggled financially. He and his wife, Joey, ended up on welfare at one point. Um, they had very little income, very limited income. Uh, Dick York, though, ended up, he and Joey, they uh, bought and ran an apartment building for a while. And when tenants fell behind, on their rent, he refused to evict them. He just couldn't stand the thought of seeing someone on the street homeless. And he became an advocate for the homeless in the latter years of his life. He was very involved in a lot of charities. Dick York was a very kind, good-hearted, very sweet man. He's someone I adore and I'm very, very fond of. And he passed away in 1992. He developed emphysema. He was a smoker for many years. He smoked three packs a day and he developed emphysema. At one point, he became completely homebound. Um, in regard to his career, after, after he left Bewitched, his career pretty much ended. He was in no more films. He really hadn't done a film since 1960 or 1959, but he was not in any episodic television anymore after he left Bewitched. Um, he was in an episode of Simon and Simon in 1984 and also an episode of Fantasy Island around the same time. And I think that was pretty much it regarding his acting career. But he developed emphysema and passed away in 1992. I believe he was 63 years old. I was very, very saddened to hear of his passing. Dick Sargent would pass away two years later. Dick Sargent came out as a gay man when the tabloids, not sure which one, threatened to tell the world that he was gay. So Dick Sargent decided that he would beat them to it. Came out as a gay man in the early 90s. He had been in episodic television after Bewitched ended pretty regularly. He worked steadily as an actor. He was in episodes of Different Strokes, Charlie's Angels, 
Three's Company, Fantasy Island, The Dukes of Hazard. But after he came out as gay, his acting career pretty much dwindled down, came pretty much to an end. Um, Liz Montgomery stood by him, you know, through it all. She was right there with him, right there for him. He was asked to be the Grand Marshal in the Gay Pride Parade in 1992 when Liz Montgomery went and was in the parade with him. And when the, uh, when the press, the press, of course, was there, press asked her, well, why did you come out today? And she said, well, to be with, to support my buddy. And so, of course, again, like I said earlier, they were lifelong friends. Dick Sargent was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 1989, and he passed away in 1994. And I believe he was 62 years old. I, again, very saddened to hear of his passing. Um, again, very fond of both Dick York and Dick Sargent. Um, always have been. I discovered Bewitched when I was probably around eight, nine years old in the late 70s or early 80s. It was one of those TV shows that came on after school every day, and I fell in love with it. And so I've liked those two gentlemen ever since those days. As for Elizabeth Montgomery, she, after her breakup with Richard, she, she by the way, um, back to she and Richard Michaels, they did break up. And she later met and fell in love with Robert Foxworth. Robert Foxworth was Chase Joberti on uh, Falcon Crest for many years on CBS. They lived together for a very long time. They finally married in 1994. The following year, Liz was diagnosed with colon cancer. Two months later, she passed away at the age of 62. She died in May of 1995. She actually died on my birthday, May the 18th, 1995. Very saddened by her passing. My family and I, we all really took that loss pretty pretty personally, pretty hard. My sister was actually taping episodes of Bewitched every day. They were in the uh, Dick Sargent era. And she was taping episodes every day. But after Liz passed, she stopped taping the episodes and could not watch the ones that she had taped until many months later. So Liz really, you know, she really drew you in. The whole show really captivated the country and really drew in a lot of people and is still drawing in people today. Now, I have yet to see the movie Bewitched. My sister saw it. She liked it. It did bomb at the box office, unfortunately. But then again, I was not very surprised because no matter who you would try to get to portray Samantha Stevens, she's going to be compared to Elizabeth Montgomery immediately. You know, I don't think anyone is going to be able to really fill those shoes. They're just that big and they're pretty impossible to to fill. There are great actresses out there, of course. But uh, again, Liz, she made her mark and, uh, you know, she, she owned that role. She still does. And of course, after she left, after Bewitched ended, she went on to do lots of TV movies. She became really one of the queens of TV movies. She portrayed lots of dark characters like Lizzie Borden. She was in the uh, TV movie, A Case of Rape, which I haven't seen that in a long time, but she was phenomenal in that movie. She did another movie with O.J. Simpson in 1977. Um, I can't think of the name of it. It was on CBS. But uh, she portrayed a cop, and they were partners, and they ended up in um, a love affair. Uh, It's on YouTube if you'd like to check it out. She also did a lot of other TV movies. She kind of wanted to get away from the character of Samantha Stevens. She felt as though she had been typecast, or she was trying to avoid being typecast. But, you know... Although she really was great in the TV films that she did, and I've seen several of them, you know, we still love her as Samantha. That's never going to change. I think that she grew to accept that as she got older, which it's not a bad thing to have a legacy that wonderful. Um, Of course, as I said, the entire series is available on DVD. And again, if you get if you have access to Antenna TV, you can watch it over there every single day. Two episodes back to back. I think they're in the Dick York period right now. I saw a couple of episodes the other day over the weekend. 
Um, no, not over the weekend. It was uh, one day last week. I happened to run across Bewitched, and yeah, they're in the Dick York period. They're in, I believe, the 1967-68 season. That was a season when Serena uh, was dressed up as a hippie, and she was singing the Iffin song. That was a really big deal. But at the time, by the way, back in 1968, that made uh, the cover of TV Guide for Liz Montgomery to actually embrace the hippies. That was a big, big deal. And you can read about that if you Google, um, you know, uh, that particular TV guide. You can find out all about it. It's a fascinating read. But anyway, um, just wanted to take the time to show some love to Bewitched and to the wonderful cast that worked on that show over that eight-season period, as well as those who work behind the scenes on the show as well. So, um, and of course, all the guest stars, you know, stellar group of people. And again... Sort of a sweet show. It's one of those shows that's still so special to me, so special to us, and so very much in my heart. And I love being able to check it out every chance I get. And on that note, that'll wrap up the episode for this week for Two Sisters, One TV. Until next time, when we're back with a ba- when we're back with a brand new episode. We will see you all then.